The population in the inland northwest is booming and finding housing is not always easy. There's just not too many places or you know options. We have people who want to come work for us that can't because they can't find affordable housing. Now, the housing problem is leading some people to find creative solutions. We either could um, buy a 1970s single wide trailer house or we could decide to live on a yacht. Whether it's life on the water. It's kind of utopian. Or a new way to design apartments. We actually had multiple units filled prior to even the, the places being completed. We found plenty of people willing to try something new. This is just one little slice of the pie that's a potential solution. Even turning to a childhood toy for inspiration. I love it. I play with Legos right now with my son. But now when I want to play with Legos for grown-ups, then I use this. <laughs> this is a Creme 2 News special, Boomtown, Creative Housing Solutions. As the Inland Northwest continues to grow, we are committed here at Creme 2 to keeping you up to date on the changes. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Pham. Thank you for joining us for this Boomtown special. All the growth in our area has led to some challenges when it comes to housing. Now, we want to highlight some of the creative solutions. We start with a family that decided to live on a yacht rather than in a house. Nicole Hernandez shares their story. Idaho's largest lake known for its wildlife. One, two, three, four, five, six goats. Views. And now, we'll show you our home. Molly. And I grew up up at Priest Lake. And Cameron. And I've spent a lot of time on different boats. Not as much as now, though. There we go. And then down here, it's Just our master this. bedroom. One of three. This is our galley kitchen. Plus everything else you could possibly need. This is 47 feet. It's like a squished up New York apartment. It's a New York apartment with a good view. But not nearly the price. When I first invested in Bayview, prices were economical, but prices have skyrocketed. For land, at least. Lake Ponderé. We looked at yeah, what we could spend. We either could um, buy a 1970s single wide trailer house by the railroad tracks in Athol, or we could decide to live on a yacht. All right, my dear. Even after dock fees, boat maintenance, gas prices. It pencils, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. But she's more than just home. This is like Cameron's office. They run a charter business. Maybe we could make a life out of making people happy on this lake. Okay, yep. This is our business, this is our home, this is, we don't own anything else. Living aboard is the hardest and most expensive way to live the cheap and easy life. Even just getting the boat to Bayview was hard. We motored the boat from Tacoma up through Puget Sound, through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, around the Olympic Peninsula, down the Washington coast, crossed the Columbia Bar and went up Columbia River to um, the Snake River and ended up in Lewiston. 30 days to make it here. <laughs> where they've settled in nicely. He says, make sure this airs after Gilligan's Island. <laughs> With their land neighbors across the way. And that's kind of the beauty of living in a small town is everybody knows us and everybody's really friendly. And it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of utopian. Pretty good for a family just trying to stay afloat. As people try to save for the future, some are now looking to the past for more affordable housing solutions. Channing Curtis explains the appeal of refurbishing historic homes. There's over 400 properties that are listed individually on the Spokane Register. Megan Duval is a historic preservation officer with the city of Spokane. We're actually in what's a new proposed historic district, which is the Cannon Streetcar Suburb Historic District, and that includes 500 properties. She took me on a walking tour of one of Spokane's historic districts, Boog's Edition, to talk about what goes into adding a home to the Spokane Historic Register. I think a lot of people think we get involved in every decision that you make on your historic house, um, but the interior is really yours to do whatever you want with. With the increase in demand for housing in our area, Duval says some of the historic homes that have been converted into multifamily units can be a way for people to save money on rent. One of the things that, that we said as we went through the Browns Edition Historic District process was sometimes those big mansions from the 1890s or 19, early 1900s that were broken up as early as the 1920s or 1930s, those are some of the most affordable housing units that we have in Spokane. And so by doing something like a district protection, we're actually protecting affordable housing. For people looking to purchase a historic home, you could end up saving money on your property taxes as well. 
when you own a historic house that's listed on the Spokane Register, if you do make significant improvements to it over a two-year period, we actually have some property tax reduction incentives that we can offer. Um, so for 10 years, the amount you spent on your rehabilitation is removed from your valuation of your property every year for 10 years. So you can pay a lot less in property taxes. We have all kinds of properties on the Spokane Register. So we have grand mansions and we have really simple little craftsman bungalows. And then there's other ones where it's literally just somebody is a labor of love and they over 20 years, they're, they're just pouring their heart and soul into it themselves. One of those people is Mitzi Hunter. She and her husband moved to downtown Spokane from Seattle due to rising housing prices there. COVID hit, we were living downtown and it felt like we were the only people there. So after making offers on seven different houses and losing them all, not always because of money, like sometimes it was the love letter, sometimes um, it was the timing or the financing, but this was the seventh house we offered on and we actually got it for under asking. Now the couple is working to put their house on the Spokane Historical Register. We're nominating the Roche House um, under two categories. One is because it's a um, Swiss chalet bungalow, which is a very specific type of craftsman home. First, just for its historic value, and then because the family that built the home, Gus and Lucy Roche, were early Spokane pioneers. Gus moved here in 1886 and Lucy in 1897. The couple says houses like these aren't just homes. They're a direct connection to our past. This house is our responsibility to pass on, to keep it in as good a shape as we can, restore as much as we can without making changes. It's, it's about the house and the city, and we're just along for the ride. As the region grows rapidly, it is important to remember our past. In Coeur d'Alene, a 114-year-old home was almost destroyed in the name of progress. But as photojournalist Dave Sommer shows us, sometimes you need to look back to move forward. It's amazing how close this building came to being torn down. And there were times where we were just like, I can't do this anymore. And it was just, it seemed to be piling up and we were never going to get it done. Judge William McNaughton lived in this house in the 20s and 30s. He was an Idaho State Supreme Court judge. Cindy and I first found out about this house in the spring of 2019. This is a more than 100 year old home. The county owns this, but the county says this home needs to go away. We both were familiar with this house just from the exterior and felt that it was a beautiful house and that that was a, a pity. The county had a deadline. They wanted it destroyed by October of 2019. They planned to tear it down to make a parking lot. So we knew that our best chance of saving this was to get some publicity and find out who the owner was and who the architect was. We knew if we could find the architect that that would be of historical significance important to the National Historic Registry. Well, this second floor bedroom has a view of the courthouse. So when Judge McNaughton was here, uh, from his office across Garden Street, he could look at his house and see what his children were doing over here. And there's a story that one time they set fire to the curtains. One of the things that has made this house so historically unique is that everything in here is original. Everything is 114 years old. I think we accepted it as a challenge that when yes. we were told there's no history to that house, it's just an <laughs> old house, that we were out to prove them wrong. Yeah, I mean, we'd be on the phone till two and three in the morning saying, you know, I found this, did you find this? And can you find another piece of this puzzle? I mean, just finding the architect was purely by accident. You know, I was just looking through old trade journals from that era, and, and there it was, Boyd Hamilton and George Keith. This was a major step because this was, this was an uphill battle, and I, I give, I give uh, these ladies all the credit in the world for the amount of effort that they put in to make this happen. Literally thousands of hours and well over a year to actually get the house designated. Preserving our history is very important because to know who we are today we need to know where, we, how we got here, and a lot of people are only concerned with progress without any thought to where we came from, or how we got here, or what was involved in our roots. And the architecture tells history, as well as the personal stories of the families that lived here. Apartments here in the Inland Northwest are getting a new look. We actually had multiple units filled prior to even the, the places being completed. 
how the housing crisis is changing the way developers design apartment buildings, plus a new way to look at a spare bedroom. Just two people who aren't related coming together, we profile them, match them up, and then put them in a situation that's beneficial to both. We will look at the benefits of home sharing. We have much more Boomtown content available for you to watch right now on Creme 2 Plus. To find the stories, just navigate to the News tab at the top of the screen, then scroll down to our Boomtown playlist. If you don't yet have Creme 2 Plus, you can download it on Roku or Amazon Fire now. The Inland Northwest is booming, and it's no surprise the housing demand in Spokane continues to climb right along with its population. This has pushed developers to get creative. Amanda Rowley shares a new trend with Spokane Apartments that could ease the pain of finding housing. In Spokane's housing market, you have to move fast. We actually had multiple units filled prior to even the, the places being completed. To keep up with demand, Spokane developers are seeing more requests to reduce the number of bedrooms in apartment units. It's a design that architect Jim Hayes is seeing more often. Five, six, seven, eight years ago was kind of when the three bedrooms started disappearing. Haynes designed the Sherman Flats in the University District, which offers eight one-bedroom units and a single two-bedroom unit. He has an idea why this design is becoming more common. It's strictly economic. That's what the owners feel is most rentable. And I, I, I've been told that three bedroom units are kind of difficult to keep them fully occupied all the time. Full size washer and dryer in each unit. Tyson Young manages this property. He believes the shift to smaller apartment designs can be attributed to an influx of younger people in the community who can't afford to buy their first home under the current housing market. I think it's geared more towards the people who aren't buying. So we, we have kind of that group once once you get to the point where maybe your family is getting a little bit larger, maybe you are in a position to purchase. Uh, so I think it's geared more towards those those younger, the younger crowd and first time renters. Now Haynes believes we can expect this new trend to stick around for some time because of the growth in our community. While roommates are common for apartment living, a new program in Kootenai County is looking to help more homeowners rent out their extra space. Nicole Hernandez tells us about home sharing. There's not enough housing supply in our region, meaning prices are getting more and more expensive, including in Kootenai County. Coeur d'Alene City Council member Kiki Miller is working on a new way to get housing to people that need it. It's been a very popular idea so far. It's called home sharing. Here's the website that will be a database full of people who either have space in their homes or people looking for a place to live. Just two people who aren't related coming together. We profile them, match them up, and then put them in a situation that's beneficial to both. A safer, more foolproof way to find a sort of roommate. What's been proven nationally is that going through the vetting process and matching people up, you tend to have more successful long-term relationships. There are several home share programs just like this on the west side in Washington and across the entire country, but it's the first for the state of Idaho. This is just one little slice of the pie that's a potential solution that opens up some available spaces that people have to people who really need to rent. A potential solution for a ton of different people. Empty nesters, snowbird people, um, just singles who might need a little extra money, college students looking for a home, um, you know, somebody who's a seasonal worker, a traveling nurse. Still ahead on this Creme 2 Boomtown special, a look at the growth in RV living. When you're out here, this becomes your home. Welcome back to our Creme 2 News Boomtown Special. I'm Tim Pham. When it comes to navigating the rise of housing costs in the Inland Northwest, some solutions are built out of necessity. Nicole Hernandez has a closer look at the rise in RV living. Posted up somewhere in Spokane. I'm not sure, it's just long side of the road. This is where we found Chris Bill and his girlfriend. My, uh, my RV, place of living. 
Depending on who you ask, you'll hear drastically different reactions to RVs like this one. Hopefully we're not in this situation too long. For Chris, it's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. There's just not too many places or, you know, options. After losing their jobs and falling back on rent. I ended up, you know, getting kicked out of our home, so. It's been one month living out of this RV. It can be a little difficult, disappointing, but, you know, goal, goal orientated. We'll, we'll be back there you know, back on her feet in no time. A temporary setback for Chris. Yeah. But for Melissa. Uh, it's my home. It's a step up. It's better than um, freezing our butts off in a tent like we were. A different perspective on an RV Melissa has called home for two years. When you're out here, this becomes your home. She's been homeless for 11 years. I just got tired of paying bills, and that's the truth. Once on the streets, getting back inside seemed impossible. You have to have, um, the first month's rent, and then you have to have the deposit, and then you have to have that um, mover's fee. Then after that, you have to um, also be able to make the qualifications. And I don't. Saving up that money is hard with an RV. Because of how old it is, it's a chore. The RV has to be running so Melissa can move when she gets flagged by traffic enforcement. I already had it in powder once. I just had to go do laundry. I get back and it's gone. Neighbors report abandoned cars and RVs to the city, a system that's backed up with complaints. The volume is, has certainly gone up a little bit in terms of the number of abandoned vehicles. The city has to figure out if an RV is abandoned, the owner is just breaking a rule, or if someone is living in it. We emphasize the rules of the road. 24-hour stay rules, no parking rules, registration rules, even if the RV is a home. Objective is always to keep the occupant in the vehicle and to make sure it's safe for everybody. It's a balancing act between the neighbor's perspective and the people needing a roof over their heads. We have people who want to come work for us that, that can't because they can't find affordable housing. Housing is becoming a problem for local businesses. Now Schweitzer Mountain has a plan to keep its employees on the payroll. And it doesn't get much more creative than this. A Liberty Lake man is building a real life Lego house. I love it. I play with Legos right now with my son. But now when I want to play with Legos for grown-ups, then I use this. <laughs>Welcome back to this Creme 2 News Boomtown special, where we are looking at creative solutions to the region's housing challenges. And it's not just people, but some businesses who are coming up with ideas. Amanda Rowley tells us why Schweitzer Ski Resort decided to build its own apartment complex for its employees. Schweitzer Ski Resort employees are struggling to either find affordable housing or keep up with increasing housing costs. Especially during the last couple of years, the explosive growth that we've seen in our region has really brought that to the forefront and, and, and we're feeling it more than ever and our employees are feeling it more than ever. Human Resources Director Scott Ald worries if Schweitzer employees can no longer afford to live in the area, it will become a challenge to maintain staffing levels. But he doesn't have to wait and see. Ald says the problem is already knocking on their door. We had one manager a year ago uh, who had to leave the community because their landlord increased their lease to the point it was almost doubled and they couldn't afford to live here anymore and he and his wife had to leave the community. By building an employee apartment complex with affordable rates, Schweitzer hopes this will prevent losing any more staff. It's definitely a problem for a lot of our current staff and uh, we have people who want to come work for us that, that can't because they can't find affordable housing. In the first phase of the project, the complex will consist of three buildings with three floors. Each building will be pet friendly with one to three bedroom units available to individuals and families. After these units are built, future plans include additional housing units, outdoor play areas, and a full-service daycare facility aimed at serving Schweitzer employees. Ald says staff will also enjoy the benefit of living within walking distance of shopping, dining, and transportation services, including the public shuttle to Schweitzer. This is something that we see as a major investment in our community and our employees. Um, and in our future. When it comes to building a home, the closest many people will ever get is working with Lego bricks. 
Well, it's that idea that sparked a creative housing solution in Liberty Lake. Nicole Hernandez introduces us to a man who is building a real life home based on the idea behind Legos. Tucked in the trees in Liberty Lake. Give me a second, I'm gonna bring more legs. Laz Martinez is building his dream. This is gonna be the future of my family, right? This is our house. Their future home, also the potential future of construction. I decided to build a house out of concrete blocks and use my interlocking solution for that. He's using technology he invented. They're called joints. These plastic joints hook onto bricks or cinder blocks, allowing them to interlock like Legos. I love it. I play with Legos right now with my son. But now when I want to play with Legos for grown-ups, then I use this. <laughs> the Martinez home is the first full house using this technology. It's a dream come true. Starting as a business owner in Cuba, Laz moved to the U.S. after winning a visa lottery. The feeling of freedom is amazing. The freedom to literally build his life here and help others do the same. You can buy the blocks in your local hardware store and we'll only send you the joints with the drawings that we have in our website for free for you to learn how to do it. Right now, they are manufacturing enough joints to build one house a day. By the end of the year, they'll double that ability. We're not replacing a construction standard. We're enhancing that standard to make it available for do-it-yourself people or professional. Also, creating a more affordable alternative to new construction. Laz says if you do it yourself, it could cost 30% less. I absolutely love it. My wife and I, we're having a blast in here. Um, everyone is, you know, helping carry the blocks in here and, and putting the blocks together. His hope? To make it easier for everyone to build their dream homes too. Well, thank you for joining us for this Creme 2 News Boomtown special on creative housing solutions. We have much more Boomtown coverage available for you to watch right now on Creme 2 Plus. To find it, just navigate to the News tab at the top of the screen, then scroll down to our Boomtown playlist. If you don't yet have Creme 2 Plus, you can download it on Roku or Amazon Fire now. I'm Tim Pham. Keep it here on Creme 2 News for more Boomtown coverage.